Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on which time zone you're joining us from. A very warm welcome to this very special uh, event to celebrate the life of our friend and brother, Shabazz Bati, to commemorate his tragic assassination 11 years ago today, and to explore uh, what we might learn from and build on from the life and legacy of Shabazz Bhatti. I'm Benedict Rogers, the senior analyst for East Asia, and I had the privilege of working very closely with Shabazz for uh, about five years when I worked on Pakistan. During that time, uh, Shabazz was a grassroots uh, human rights activist, the, the leader of the All Pakistan Minorities Alliance. Uh, and we spoke uh, frequently, several times a week. We traveled together. Uh, we missed a bomb on one occasion in Islamabad by five minutes together. And of course, Shabazz went on to become Pakistan's Minister for Minorities uh, and gave his life for the cause of religious freedom in Pakistan. I remember on one occasion, there was a crisis in the village of Chasada in the Northwest Frontier province where Christians had been given an ultimatum. And on the day that the ultimatum was up, uh, I telephoned Shabazz. And I remember to this day uh, his response. He said, thank God you have called. I am actually in Chasada. I didn't know he was there. He, but he said, I'm with the Christians in Chasada. They feel forgotten. They feel the rest of the world doesn't know their plight. They feel terrified. And the mere fact that you have telephoned means I can tell them that someone out there is praying and does know about them and is advocating for them. And that was so typical of Shabazz, the fact that he was not simply in Islamabad speaking out for them, but he'd gone to be with the community themselves. Every time I've visited Rome, which has been most years uh, over the last decade or so, I have made a point, I think without fail, of always going to a church in Rome, the Basilica di San Bartolomeo al Isola, and my apologies to Italian speakers for my pronunciation, but in that basilica, Shabazz's personal Bible is on display uh, in a commemoration of modern day martyrs. So we are here today, and it's worth also noting that we are here on Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent, and it's, I think, no coincidence that as we begin this season of remembering the passion of the Lord, the suffering of Jesus Christ, we remember the suffering and sacrifice and example of Shabazz Bhatti. But as we remember Shabazz, let us also remember that no human being, however great and courageous and faithful and inspiring they are, does what they do alone. There were other people who helped shape Shabazz Bhatti's vision and uh, values and, and conduct, who mentored him, who inspired him, who, who guided him, who advised him. And so as we think of Shabazz, we think of Bishop John Joseph, of Father Bonnie Mendes, uh, and of course, of my great friend, CSW's great friend, Cecil Chowdhury. So today, uh, we're joining from all over the world. I happen to be in Washington, D.C. at the moment. We have guests from London, uh, from, uh, from Asia, uh, and from, uh, from all over. Uh, and the format today is, uh, in a moment, I will ask uh, Father Michael Nazir Ali, the uh, former Bishop Nazir Ali, former Anglican Bishop of Rochester, who is now uh, a priest in the Catholic Church, to open in prayer. I will then invite uh, Mervyn Thomas to give his opening remarks. We'll have a number of other opening remarks and statements, a series of video tributes, and then a panel discussion. It is a remarkable lineup, um, very much befitting uh, the respect that we all hold at Shabazz Inn. So before I ask um, Father Michael Nazir Ali to pray and then Mervyn Thomas to give his opening remarks, let me just, uh, uh, end my remarks with some words from Shabazz Bhatti as we remember him. Not long before his assassination, in fact, at a conference hosted by CSW, 
Shabazz said uh, these words. I want to share that I believe in Jesus Christ, who has given his own life for us. I know what is the meaning of the cross, and I am following the cross, and I am ready to die for my cause. I'm living for my community and my suffering people, and I will die to defend their rights. We may not be called ourselves to pay that ultimate price that Shabazz paid, but all of us are called to use the freedoms and opportunities that we have to uh, fight for the same cause for which Shabazz gave his life, the cause of freedom and particularly religious freedom for everyone, everywhere, all the time. So may I, may I now invite Father Michael Nazir Ali to pray and following Father Michael, Mervyn Thomas to address us. Father Michael. Yes, thank you, Benedict. I think all of us have been touched by Shahbaz Bhatti in one way or another. And um, as we remember him and as we pray, we give thanks, of course, for his own courageous witness and uh, in the end for his martyrdom, yes. Uh, but also uh, that means that we are called to be martyrs. I mean, that is what the word means, to be a witness uh, in whatever way God calls us to be. So here are some um, sentences from scripture with regard to martyrs. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree and shall spread abroad like a cedar in Lebanon. Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So let us pray. Almighty God, by whose grace and power your martyr Shabaz was enabled to witness to the truth and to be faithful unto death, grant that we who now remember him before you may likewise so bear witness to you in this world that we may receive with him the crown of glory that fades not away. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much indeed, um, Bishop Nazir Ali. Um, I first met Shabazz. Um, I remember it very well. It was in a room of Westminster Hall in Parliament. And... Um, I'd been taken there by my dear friend and colleague, Stuart Windsor. Many of you will know and remember with fondness, Stuart. And uh, Stuart used to tell me I needed to meet all kinds of people. And uh, um, some of them were less memorable than others. Uh, but I remember very well meeting Shabazz uh, because it was one of those meetings that um, you knew you had met with a special person. I had a kind of indication that I was going to meet with a special person in that Stuart had told me that Shabazz was being mentored uh, by um, our dear friend, group captain Cecil Chowdhury. And, uh, and, and he had recommended that we meet with Shabazz. One of the things that kind of put me off, um, perhaps, meeting him before I'd met him was the fact that Stuart had told me that he represented the Christian Liberation Front, and that sounded a little bit revolutionary to me. And uh, uh, I guess as Christians, we we do need to be revolutionary, but the Christian Liberation Front, it sounded a little bit um, dodgy. Uh, but when I met Shabazz, I realised that I wasn't meeting a dodgy person. I was meeting a real person. I was reaching, actually meeting a man of God. And uh, he was somebody very special. And, of course, um, I did make my views known about the name of the Christian Liberation Front. And he did, of course, change that to the, um, uh, to the, um, uh, the, the I can't remember what it, all parties, um, minorities, wasn't it, um, uh, group that he, that he, all Pakistan minorities group uh, that he then founded. And, um he was a man of, of great courage. He was a man of compassion. He was a man of peace and reconciliation. 
and above all, he was a man of justice. And uh, and we became very good friends. That was right. That was early in 2000s, maybe 2001. So I probably knew him for 10 years. And Ben has talked about um, the words that he said at our conference um, after he became a minister. And, you know, that in itself was an incredible achievement to become the first Christian federal minister uh, for for minorities. And that was uh, that was an amazing platform that God gave Shabazz Batty and he used it. But he never forgot the people that he was represented. He wasn't one of these people that. Um, uh, that, that gloried in the fact that he was a government minister and all the trappings that there are around government ministers. He was a man of the people and, uh, and he stood up for, for those who were downtrodden. I remember that first meeting, as I've just told you, but I also remember the last meeting. And the last meeting I had with Shabazz was in a hotel room in the Hilton Hotel in Washington, D.C. And we were both there at the prayer breakfast. And, uh, and, and I was there with Stuart again. And, uh, and Shabazz asked Stuart and I if we would go to his room and, and pray with him. And so we went. And it was, it was only a month after his friend and fellow campaigner, Salman Tazir, uh, the uh, governor of Punjab, had been assassinated. Uh, for his stand in um, uh, against the blasphemy laws in Pakistan. And, and I said to Shabazz, he was telling me, in fact, he showed me on his phone numbers of death threats that he was getting every day, more than one a day. And I said, Shabazz, are you frightened? And I, I'm pretty sure if I'd have been in his place, I would have been frightened. But Shabazz wasn't. There was not... Uh, if he was, if there was any fear, he certainly didn't show it. And he said very similar words to the words that Ben has just talked about. He said to me, "Listen, if I die, I die. I serve, uh, I serve a saviour who went all the way to the cross and gave his life for me. The least I can do is give my life in his service." That was in the first week in February, in 2011, and it was a month later. Uh, that I woke up one morning to the news uh, that Shabazz had indeed given his life in the cause. And uh, we, I'm so thrilled that we can have this event, that we can continue to remember the life and work of Shabazz Batty. And I'm, I thank God that today his memory still lives on. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mervyn, for those uh, powerful words and Father Michael for that opening prayer. We are now going to hear uh, statements uh, on behalf of uh, Shabazz Bhatti's family. We are privileged uh, to be joined by Natasha Bhatti, who was Shabazz's niece. Uh, her statement will be uh, immediately followed by a statement on behalf of uh, Pakistan civil society delivered by uh, our wonderful friend Michelle Chowdhury, uh, president of the uh, Cecil and Iris Chowdhury Foundation, uh, daughter of uh, Cecil Chowdhury, who, as I mentioned earlier, was uh, Shabazz's uh, mentor. And I just want to say at this point, we will also hear later uh, in the proceedings, and we're privileged to be joined uh, by Asia Noreen uh, and also by Shabazz Bhatti's uh, uh, brother, both his brothers, uh, Dr. Paul Bhatti, and Dr. Peter Bhatti. Um, but we will hear now from Natasha Bhatti and then from Michelle Chowdhury. My uncle Shabazz was the youngest of his siblings and definitely the family favorite. Memories of my childhood are flooded with images of my uncle Shabazz. He was full of life, had a great sense of humor, was extremely caring, and he loved his family beyond words. He ensured that my brother and I, who lived abroad in Canada, visited Pakistan at least every two years so we would know and value our extended family members. Not only that, he wanted us to know and love Pakistan as much as he did. Often on our trips to Pakistan, he would make sure to bring us to museums, national monuments, and historic sites, all while explaining the importance and significance of each one. 
Without a doubt, he had a deep love and passion for his country, and he wanted to make sure that the future generations of his family did too. It's not easy for religious minorities to grow up in a country that constantly shuns them and makes them feel like second-class citizens. Growing up, my uncle had his fair share of struggles as a religious minority. He had every reason to despise his country and had every opportunity to leave and be successful abroad. Yet, the love that he had for his country never wavered, despite the hardships that the country threw at him. He believed in the Pakistan that was created by its founding father, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, a Pakistan that was free for all to worship as they pleased, a Pakistan that was home to every religious minority. My uncle knew very well the sacrifices his forefathers made for his nation, and he knew that he too needed to fight for equality, peace, and harmony like those that went before him. From the time we spent in Pakistan as kids, we never truly understood all that my uncle Shabazz was going through. We didn't understand that when he came home from a long day of work, he was actually visiting people under false allegations in prison, or that he was just visiting people whose entire villages were burned to the ground. We didn't know that he was in parliament fighting for a 5% quota for religious minorities to bring them into positions of power, or that he was able to achieve the first ever minority seats in Senate and create a 24-hour minorities helpline. As kids, it was hard to look past his charm and joyful nature and see the pain and heartache he was constantly facing. Today, as we look back at all that Shabazz Bhatti fought for and gave his life up for, we should be encouraged to do the same. Religious freedom is a fundamental, God-given right that should be fought for and should be protected. Shabazz Bhatti stood up for the voiceless in a country with some of the most ruthless laws towards religious minorities in the world. In the face of fear, he was completely fearless. His commitment towards God and the love for his community caused him to be fierce and relentless regardless of the circumstances that he faced. In some of the most challenging situations, he achieved the greatest outcomes for the religious minorities of Pakistan. My uncle spent many nights with my brother and I talking to us about the importance of our faith and fighting to protect it. He told us never to forget Pakistan because our forefathers have died for this land. Those late night talks have cultivated a deep love, passion and commitment towards Pakistan in my heart that remains today and will remain forever. His absence in our lives can never be replaced, but we can all keep his legacy alive by continuing the work that he left behind for all of us. today. As we gather to celebrate his life, I know that my uncle did not die in vain. His legacy continues to inspire people to bring his mission forward. He continues to inspire people to stand up for the truth and fight injustices. Many have pledged to continue fighting for the cause that Shabazz Bhatti has sacrificed his whole life for. And because of this, I am hopeful that the work that he left behind will continue to be fulfilled and we will achieve a better future for all the generations to come. Greetings from Pakistan. 2nd March 2011, a day etched deep in our hearts, the day when one of the strongest voices against religious extremism in Pakistan was brutally silenced. Non-Muslims in Pakistan lost their Martin Luther King. Shabazz Bhatti, Pakistan's federal minister for minorities, was brutally murdered in broad daylight outside his mother's home in Islamabad as he dared to speak up against religious persecution in Pakistan. It was Shivaz's unwavering belief in Jinnah's Pakistan that made him dedicate 28 years of his life to strive to create a Pakistan that the father of the nation, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, had envisioned, to ensure an enlightened and moderate Pakistan where every citizen would enjoy equal rights, opportunities, and complete religious freedom. Shabazz was one of my best friends. Yes, I am one of the few privileged who knew the man behind the activist. My father, late group captain Cecil Chaudhry, was Shabazz's mentor. He guided and nurtured Shabazz through his struggle for religious equality in Pakistan. While Shabazz was still in school, he set out of his native village of Khushpur with nothing but conviction and extremely meager resources his mission was to strive to liberate the persecuted Christians of Pakistan from the clutches of religious discrimination, hate, 
injustice and intolerance. And even at that young age, he was prepared to face the adversities and threats that were to follow. And adversities, there were many. Despite threats and warnings, he continued to fearlessly raise his voice against discrimination and religious intolerance. He cherished the idea of interfaith harmony, tolerance and equality in a free society. It is for this vision that he lived and hoped to see it realized someday. And if the need ever arose, it was for this cause that he was prepared to die. Shabazz was a bold and courageous man. He knew what he wanted and how to achieve it and made sure that nothing and no one was going to dissuade him. After reaching parliament as a member of the National Assembly, Shabazz Bhatti continued to address the hardships and challenges faced by non-Muslims in Pakistan and was successful in bringing about some extremely positive changes, such as the 5% job quota in order to mainstream religious minorities in Pakistan. Establishment of a 24-hour helpline enabling people to reach out for help. He set up interfaith harmony committees at grassroots levels in order to promote a peaceful coexistence in society. In April 2008, Shabazz Bhatti presented a bill for the representation of non-Muslims in the Senate. The Senate being the highest legislative body in the country at that time did not have any non-Muslim representation. The bill called for five seats in the Senate to be reserved for minorities from uh, to be reserved for members from the religious minority communities. It was due to his tireless efforts that on the first anniversary of his martyrdom, 2nd March 2012, history was created in Islamabad. The members of the the numbers of the representation of the Pakistani Senate went from 100 to 104. For the first time in Pakistan, four representatives of the religious minority minority communities were elected into the upper house of parliament. It was a landmark achievement indeed. Yes, they can silence the man, but not his vision. His vision and ideology lives on as there are many who remain inspired by his life and choose to continue to strive with hope and determination to realize what Shabazz Bhatti envisioned for the religious minorities of Pakistan. The fact that 11 years later, we are all gathered here today to remember and celebrate his life is proof that 27 bullets did not silence Shabazz Bhatti. And we, the members of the Pakistani civil society, along with community leaders, continue to do everything in our power to carry forward the legacy of the, uh, to carry forward his legacy towards working to, uh, towards working, uh, working towards a just, tolerant and pluralistic Pakistan. Yes, one day this country will be the Jinnah's Pakistan that Shabazz Bhatti laid down his life for. Shabazz till the very end remained loyal to his principles. He believed and he, he remained very loyal to the principles he believed in. And it is now up to each one of us to keep alive what Shabazz Bhatti died for. Freedom of religion for all. May God bless his soul with eternal peace. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Michelle Chowdhury, for that uh, very moving uh, tribute. And you quite rightly used uh, the phrase to describe Shabazz, uh, Pakistan's Martin Luther King. Uh, it's no coincidence that when I heard the news of Shabazz's terrible assassination, uh, I wrote an article which was pu published the very next day uh, on the 3rd of March 2011. And the headline was yesterday, uh, Pakistan lost uh, its Martin Luther King. So um, it's very appropriate to uh, use that ex expression. So thank you, uh, Michelle, and uh, also thank you to Natasha Bhatti for her tribute. We are now going to uh, hear uh, and watch the last recorded video message from Shabazz Bhatti. Let's hear his final words. The forces of violence, militant band organization, the Taliban and pro Al Qaeda, they want to impose their radical philosophy in Pakistan. And whoever stand against their radical philosophy, they threaten them. When I'm leading this campaign against the Sharia laws for the abolishment of blasphemy law and speaking for the oppressed and marginalized, persecuted Christian and other minority, these Taliban threatened me. 
but I want to share that I believe in Jesus Christ who has given his own life for us. I know what is the meaning of cross and I'm following of the cross and I'm ready to die for a cause. I'm living for the, my community and suffering people and I will die to defend their rights. So these threats and these warnings cannot change my opinion and principles. I will prefer to die for my principle and for the justice of my community rather to, to compromise against uh, on the, these threats. Thank you. Shabazz Bhatti's powerful last recorded words. And it's worth noting, uh, I believe I'm correct in saying this, that that message was specially recorded to be broadcast only in the event of his murder. And it was indeed broadcast on the BBC and other international media uh, soon after the news of his tragic killing uh, was uh, announced. Uh, and it's also worth noting uh, that um, the uh, Catholic uh, uh, band known as Uberfus um, actually put the, Shabazz's uh, last words from that video, and indeed the video itself, to music. And I'm sure you can find that on YouTube. Uh, uh, I know you can. Um, but uh, they made a powerful tribute to Shabazz um, based on that uh, video. We are now going to hear... Uh, a selection of pre-recorded video tributes which will flow one after the other. It's important to say that we received uh, a great many more than we can possibly show now, um, and it's only because of our, the limitations on our time that we are going to show uh, five tributes now, but all the tributes that were recorded uh, will be available uh, online. I think on our website uh, we can share more information about that uh, shortly, um, but you will be able to view all the tributes um, uh, after this event, uh, but we're going to hear a selection of five tributes uh, now. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today is 2nd March, and today is the martyrdom day of Mr. Shabazz Bhatti, who was my federal minister for minorities. He was extremely capable. He did a lot of reforms in the ministry of minorities. He, on his advice, we created four seats in the upper house for the minorities, 5% quota in the jobs. And we declare 11th August as a minority day. And we established prayer rooms in the jail. And we also set an example to celebrate the minorities day at the government level. These are the contribution. And when he was assassinated, I requested his brother, Dr. Paul Bhatti, to become my advisor for minorities. And he graciously accepted my offer and then we worked together and we completed the mission of Mr. Shabazz Bhatti. On behalf of the American people, we extend our sincere condolences to the family and friends of Shahbaz Bhatti, the first minister for minority affairs in Pakistan, who was assassinated 11 years ago for his human rights work. Until his murder on March 2nd, 2011, Minister Bhatti courageously advocated for human rights and for religious minorities in Pakistan. He bravely championed universal values that both Pakistanis and Americans hold dear, the right to freedom of religion and the right to freedom of speech. We continue to advocate for repealing blasphemy and apostasy laws, as Minister Bhatti did. We call on governments to eliminate these laws and prevent their unjust and dangerous application against religious minorities. Inspired by Minister Bhatti's inaugural role as Minority Affairs Minister, 
We hope the noble work which Minister Bhakti died for will continue. I hope governments and civil society will continue to make concrete, measurable progress in protecting members of all religious minority groups and in protecting all people, no matter their belief, change in beliefs, or unbelief. Today, we remember Minister Bhakti as a shining example of courage and a fearless advocate for tolerance and dignity for all. We commemorate the death, the killing of Shabbos Bhatti. As a minister, he was constantly fighting against blasphemy law and against all those supporting blasphemy. And he stood for the blasphemy victims, like Asia Bibi. He always supported them. This he paid with his life. And we mourn with the family. But also we continue to work in his spirit. Pakistan must abolish blasphemy law. And we continue to support blasphemy victims. So we mourn. But in the same time, in the spirit of Shabbos Bhatti, we continue our work. My name is Nadine Mayenza, and I serve as the chair of the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom, or USERF. I'm honored to be a part of this event today commemorating the life and legacy of Shabbos Bhatti. He was a man of great bravery and integrity. And his tragic loss 11 years ago continues to be felt by religious freedom advocates around the world. Yusuf had a very close relationship with Mr. Bhatti, first supporting him as a fearless religious freedom advocate, and then working with him as the only Christian cabinet member in his capacity as federal minister for minority affairs in Pakistan from 2008 until his tragic demise in 2011. During his time as a federal minister, Mr. Bhatti took numerous steps to support religious minorities, including advocacy to reform Pakistan's blasphemy laws. In recognition of his tireless efforts, Yusuf in September of 2009, facilitated a visit to Washington, D.C. to introduce him to policymakers at the White House, the State Department, and Congress. During this visit, the commission presented Mr. Badi with an award for his courageous work, defending the rights of all Pakistanis, especially religious minorities. Yusuf was aware at the time of the danger he faced because of his public advocacy. In fact, despite receiving numerous death threats for years, Mr. Bhatti forged on and never wavered as a man of deep faith. Yusuf highlighted the need for better security for Mr. Bhatti. However, our concerns went unheeded. We also called for his killers to be held to account, but they were never prosecuted. Mr. Bhatti, along with Salman Tazir, the former governor of Punjab, were both murdered within two months of each other for speaking out against Pakistani's notorious blasphemy laws. They also championed the case of Asia Biba, a Christian mother of five who spent nearly a decade in prison after being sentenced to death for blasphemy. Miss Bibby is thankfully free today in Canada in part because of their shared legacies. In the years since Mr. Badi's death, violent extremism has increased in Pakistan and religious minorities remain a target, particularly Shias and Ahmadi Muslims, Hindus, Christians, and Sikhs. In Pakistan's blasphemy laws are still being enforced vigorously with dozens of innocents languishing on death row and others serving lengthy prison terms. Now more than ever, the U.S. government and like-minded allies must send the message that there will be consequences for these egregious abuses by imposing targeted sanctions on Pakistani's government agencies and officials responsible. Eleven years after his assassination, we continue to gain strength from Mr. Badi's legacy. He defended a vision of a diverse, multicultural, and multi-religious society. He opposed Pakistan's blasphemy laws as a stark betrayal of that vision, and he paid the ultimate price for his courage. Mr. Badi's death was not in vain, and his legacy will continue to inspire and encourage us to keep pressing on until his vision is realized. Thank you. Dear brothers, sisters, it is a privilege to join so many other religious and uh, political leaders from around the world, as well as uh, many human rights defenders to commemorate the 11th anniversary of the tragic and uh, brutal assassination of our brother Shabazz Bhakti in Pakistan to reflect on his legacy and how we might build on it 
and ensure that it lives on. I am deeply inspired by CSW's strap line, they can silence the man, but not his vision. Regrettably, I never had the chance to meet Shabbat Sabakti personally, though I have heard so much about him. A devout Catholic, a champion of human rights for all, a courageous activist for religious freedom, and in his final years, a devoted politician and minister for ministries affairs in Pakistan, a shocking murder gunned down a broad daylight. I would dearly have loved to have met the Shabbats. Throughout my life in the church, I have sought in my own humble way to speak out for justice, defend human rights and religious freedom, and advocate peace for all peoples, both in my own country of Myanmar, which currently is experiencing a renewed trial, tribulation and heartache, and throughout Asia and the world. I know that uh, had uh, we had a chance to meet the Shabbats, I would have found much to discuss and agree upon. I am aware that a course for the beatification of Shabbats has been opened. I can say as a president of the Federation of Asia Bishop Conferences that the way Shabbats lived his life and vocation with extraordinary such love, faith, courage, charity and commitment is an example and inspiration for us all and we should never ever forget the cause which he lived and died. The basic human right for every person. Let us resolve to keep the vision of Shabbat Bhakti alive and continue to work for these goals. The best way to honor the life and legacy of Shabbat Bhakti is to continue his mission, to counter hatred with love, violence with peace, repression with freedom, terror with justice, lies with truth, and despair with hope. May God bless all that mission. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Sean Fraser, Canada's Minister of Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship, and I'd like to thank my colleague MP Ruby Sahota for inviting me to say a few words today and for highlighting the importance of this incredible event. To all of you, I want to extend my warmest wishes as you gather to celebrate the life of Shabazz Bhatti, a champion for minority religious rights and freedoms on his 11th martyrdom anniversary. Shabazz Bhatti worked tirelessly to promote religious freedom for not just the Christian community in Pakistan, but also for Sikhs, Hindus, and Ahmadiyyas and other minority communities in Pakistan and around the world. His work continues to inspire so many. Equality, justice, and freedom lie in our nation's very core. These values are enshrined in the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which guides us as we work to protect minority rights here in Canada. I invite all of you gathered here today to reflect on Minister Body's work and to consider how we can each do our part to create a more just and equal society, both here at home and around the world. Thanks again to all of you for having me, and thanks in particular to my friend and colleague, Ruby Sahota for the invitation. We've gathered together to celebrate the life and martyrdom of Shabazz Bhatti. Now that may sound strange to some, sure we would commemorate his life, but why would we celebrate his martyrdom? Isn't that just giving license to evil? Psalm 116 verse 15 says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Our brother Shabazz knew that his life was precious to the Lord and that knowledge gave him the confidence to speak up for the oppressed religious minorities in Pakistan. 
But Shabazz also understood that his death would also be precious in the sight of God as he sought to walk the way of Christ. Naturally, this fueled his passion for serving his brothers and sisters, even if it demanded his life, which it did. But Shabazz knew that his death on earth was only the start of the life for which he was destined. And so keeping his eyes on Jesus, Shabazz lived his life with courage and boldness in the face of significant opposition. Now I have come to understand that there are three types of martyrdom. The one we all readily recognize comes in the form of a violent and bloody death. Most of us would not and are not called to endure such martyrdom, but we must be ready if it comes to us. Shabazz was ready when he was gunned down in the streets by those who vehemently opposed his beliefs and his religious convictions, and thus he received his martyrdom. The other levels of martyrdom were also exhibited by Shabazz and are the ones we must all attain. As followers of Jesus, we are called to die to the world and die to self. This is what it takes to be God's witness, his martyr in the world that lives in darkness. Again, I say we can celebrate the martyrdom of Shabazz because he was faithful to the point of death. And as he breathed his last, his Lord was faithful to take him to his eternal rest. So this is not a sad story, but one with a happy ending, one worth remembering, retelling, and yes, celebrating. But Shabazz's work is done, ours continues. May we all exhibit the same commitment and trust in the one who hides us in the shadow of his wings and helps us to accomplish the good works he has planned for each one of us to do. That is the legacy of our brother Shabazz Bati, and it is the torch he has now passed to us. May the Lord bless you and keep you in your service to him. Well, a huge thank you to uh, everybody who recorded uh, tribute messages, both those that we've just heard from, and as I said earlier, all the others uh, that will be available on our events page, uh, hopefully soon after uh, this event. So do go and, and watch uh, the others uh, as well. Uh, it is now um, an enormous privilege to come towards the end of this section of the event, but please don't go away because uh, there's more to come. But to, to wrap up this section of the event, it's a privilege to hear firstly from uh, Asia Noreen, better known as Asia Bibi, uh, who many of us uh, are very familiar with her case. She spent nine years uh, in prison on blasphemy charges and was acquitted in 2018. And of course, Shabazz Bhatti, was uh, so deeply involved in her case. And then after Azia, uh, we will uh, hear a, a final message for this section from uh, Shabazz Bhatti's uh, brother, Dr. Paul Bhatti, and then we will go into a panel discussion. So uh, welcome uh, Azia Bibi and then Paul Bhatti. सबको मेरा सलाम मेरा नाम आसिया है मैं आप सबकी शुक्रगुजार हूं कि जिन्होंने मुझे मौका दिया कि मैं अपने ख्यालात का इजहार कर सकूं ग्रीटिंग्स एवरीवन माय नेम इज आसिया आई एम ग्रेटफुल एंड थैंकफुल टू एवरीबॉडी फॉर गिविंग मी दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी टू एक्सप्रेस माय व्यूज अपनी जिंदगी के 13 साल मैंने जेल काटी ब्लेस फैमिली लॉ में बड़े दुख और करब के साथ आई स्पेंट 13 इयर्स इन प्रिजन ऑन फॉल्स ब्लेसमी चार्जेस विद ग्रेट पेन एंड सफरिंग मैं अपने बच्चों और खामन से दूर रही और मेरी जिंदगी हंधेरों में गिर गई I stayed away from my husband and my children and my life was in darkness.
इसी दौरान मेरी शबाज भट्टी से बात हुई उन्होंने मेरे दुख को समझा और मुझे तसली दी ड्यूरिंग दिस टाइम आई हर्ड फ्रॉम शबाज भट्टी एंड टॉक टू हिम हु अंडरस्टूड माय पेन एंड गिव मी अ लॉट ऑफ कंफर्ट जिसकी वजह से मेरे अंदर जिंदगी की उम्मीद पैदा हुई मैंने खुदावन में रहकर खुदावन के मान में रहकर अपनी कैद काटी बेगुनाही की and because of that talk from shivas bhatti i get me a lot of comfort and in i i put my faith in lord jesus christ and in in faith to to continue my struggle main shukr guzar hu मैं शुक्रगुजार हूँ खुदावन की और कनाडा गवर्नमेंट की कि जिन्होंने मुझे आज़ादी से रहने का मौका दिया आई एम ग्रेटफुल टू द लॉर्ड गॉड अलमाइटी एंड टू कनाडा फॉर गिविंग मी दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी टू वंस अगेन लिव इन फ्रीडम आज मैं शबाज भट्टी की बरसी के दिन उनको मैं सलाम पेश करना चाहती हूँ टुडे ऑन द डेथ एनिवर्सरी ऑफ शबाज भट्टी आई विश टू पे हॉमेज टू शबाज मेरी ये ख्वाहिश है कि जैसे मैंने अपनों से दूर बच्चों और शोहर से दूर तेरह साल कैद काटी बेगुनाही की और मैं चाहती हूं कि इस तरह मेरी तरह कोई और कैद ना काटे माय विश एंड प्रेयर इज दैट द वे आई स्पेंट 13 इयर्स अवे फ्रॉम माय फैमिली एंड माय चिल्ड्रन दैट नोबडी एल्स हैज टू सफर अंडर फॉल्स चार्जेस नोबडी एल्स हैज टू सफर द सेम फेट एज माय सेल्फ अगेन मैं चाहती हूं कि आप सब मिलकर शबाज भट्टी की आवाज बने और इस सफर को जारी रखें माय होप एंड प्रेयर इज दैट ऑल ऑफ यू कीप द वॉइस एंड मिशन ऑफ शबाज भट्टी अलाइव एंड कंटिन्यू दिस स्ट्रगल मैं ताकि इस झूठे और गुनाहने जन्म को जो बेगुनाही का लोगों पर लगाया जाता है इसको खत्म किया जाए मैं थैंक यू कहती हूँ सबको जो मेरी आवाज इस वक्त सुन रहे हैं और खुदावन में रहकर मैं दुआ करती हूँ कि खुदावन आप सबको बरकत दे और आप सबकी सलामती करे थैंक Dr. Paul Bartley, welcome. Uh, please, please do go ahead. We're delighted to have you with us. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening to everybody from Islamabad. I'm here to celebrate the 11th anniversary of uh, Shabazz Bhatti. I would like to express my sincere thanks to all of you, and especially CSW and Cecil and Irish Chaudhry Foundation. international christian wise and global <coughs> institute of religious freedom i am really happy 
that uh, all of you are present here and keep alive the vision and uh, <clears throat> message of Shabazz. This is a great encouragement for all of us who carry his legacy. And especially, I would like to share and confirm what uh, Roger said, that during the life of Shabazz, there were so many who supported him. Apart from his close friend like Cecil Chaudhry and Bishop John Joseph, a lot of religious leaders, including Muslim religious leaders, political parties like Pakistan People's Party, Benzur Bhutto, and many other people who supported in his struggle because they were inspired by Shabazz and they wanted a Pakistan where everybody can live without fear. And that was the ideology of Jinnah, founder father of Pakistan. And uh, he, his vision is still, I mean, uncompleted. And we try our best and your presence, your message, your support, encourage us to continue his vision and mission. Just I want to uh, share one, um, one personal, I mean, event with the Shabazz that I was not really concerned to work in Pakistan. I was not committed. I was not convinced that I should come and work in Pakistan. And his last year, he was calling me often and asking me to come in Pakistan and work together with him. And many times I was uh, taking it as a joke. And many times I was just uh, um, considering it as I didn't hear it. But last month before he, his death, he called me consistently and regularly and asking me to come back to Pakistan. And one day, it was two or three, da three days before his death, he said, Paul, you have to come back to Pakistan to support me. And I just got irritated and laughed about that. And I said, Shabazz, which kind of brother you are? who is calling from paradise to hell. So he immediately replied, Paul, the door of paradise start from Pakistan. So after three days of his death, when I came to Pakistan, I was really angry about the, against the, this extremist, against government who was unable to protect Pakistan, who was unable to protect my brother, but after a few days, it happened that I decided to remain in Pakistan. The Pakistani government, led by Pakistan People's Party, offered me to continue as VN and mission. And that time, when I felt that it was wish and desire of Shabazz, it, I don't know how I decided to remain in Pakistan and continue his legacy until now. Though I'm not often in Pakistan due to my job that I have to continue, but we continue his vision. And I am thankful to all those who are supporting us to continue his vision and mission. Tomorrow we are going to celebrate his uh, 11th anniversary here in Islamabad. And I am really astonished how many people loved him and they still remember him. People from the political parties, not only people's party, many other parties, religious leaders, and even people who are opposing that time, they start realizing that it is that Shabazz Vian which is needed to bring Pakistan, uh, peace in Pakistan and bring unity in a divided community. So I am thankful to again to all of us, all of you who are carrying this mission and supporting us to carry the legacy of Shabazz. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much to uh, both Azia Bibi and Dr. Paul Bhatti for those uh, very moving uh, final uh, tributes to conclude uh, that section of the event, which was uh, paying tributes to Shabazz Bhatti. We now move into uh, a panel discussion uh, to reflect further on the life and legacy and example of Shabazz, uh, the issues in Pakistan today, and how we can continue uh, Shabazz Bhatti's mission. And I'm really delighted to be joined by uh, a very distinguished panel, 
almost all of whom uh, I know very well. Um, and uh, one of our panelists, uh, I haven't had the privilege of meeting until now, but I'm delighted to uh, do so now uh, virtually. So I'm very pleased to welcome um, my good friend and colleague over many years, uh, the founder and president of CSW, Mervyn Thomas. Uh, I'm delighted to welcome uh, Knox Thames, the uh, former special advisor for religious minorities in the Near East and South and Central Asia at the State Department and currently senior fellow at the Institute for Global Engagement. It's a privilege to be joined by Tahira Abdullah, uh, who is uh, the one panelist that I haven't until now met, but I'm delighted to welcome you. Tahira Abdullah is a distinguished uh, rights and peace activist, economic development practitioner, researcher, and author. Uh, and lastly, uh, a, a delight to welcome uh, Jan Fiegel, the former uh, European Union uh, Special Envoy for the Promotion of uh, Freedom of Religion or Belief Outside the EU. Uh, Jan, it's great to see you again, and uh, thank you for, for joining us. Um, we have about uh, just slightly over half an hour for discussion, and in a moment I, I will invite our panelists to share just very brief opening remarks and then get a discussion going uh, among us. But I, I just thought I would kick off on a slightly lighter note, because we have quite rightly heard powerful tributes to Shabazz Bhatti's uh, courage and faith and dedication. Uh, and uh, he was, for me, as he was for all of us, a powerful inspiration. But he was also a very human uh, person as well, with a great sense of humor. That has been referenced already. But uh, I remember the last time I saw Shabazz in person was when he uh, was in London as uh, minister uh, and we were at an event and he was joking about the fact that all of the photographs uh, that were taken of him were very serious photographs and none of them showed him smiling. Whereas we knew in real life, in our interaction, that he smiled uh, all the time, um, quite remarkably so given the uh, weight of uh, responsibility and, and challenge on his shoulders. So um, we had uh, fun trying to take photographs of him with a, with a nice smile. And I remember there is one very nice photograph that I think we've sometimes used since his uh, assassination that really captures uh, his humor and his humanity, um, as well as uh, his, his courage uh, and faith um, and dedication. So um, uh, let me invite our panel to make just some very brief remarks. And I'm going to start first uh, with Mervyn Thomas, and then I'll invite uh, uh, others one by one. M Mervyn, over to you. Thanks very much, Ben. Um, and I'll tr try and keep this reasonably brief because that's, um, there's a lot to get through. Um, I, I was going to start off with, with, a, uh, with a list of things that Shabazz had achieved, but I think we've heard that from a number of people tonight, particularly from Michelle, who um, really listed the wonderful achievements that, that um, Shabazz um, achieved in, in his life. But um, I, I will start off uh, with the fact that on his appointment as minister, Shabazz dedicated his life to the struggle for human equality, social justice, religious freedom, and to the uplifting and empowering of the religious minorities' communities. He said that he accepted the post as minister for the sake of the oppressed, downtrodden and marginalised. And he stayed true to that commitment until his last breath. But as we've said, that was 11 years ago. Um, are things any better today is the question that I ask. Are things better in Pakistan than they were then? Sadly, the answer is no. Uh, of course, it was only two years after Shabazz's death that we had the tragic twin suicide bombings at the All Saints Church in Peshawar, killing at least 127 people and injuring 250 others. And as we look back over the years since Shabazz's death, sadly, violent extremism has increased in Pakistan and religious minorities remain a target, not just Christians, but Shia Muslims, Ahmadiyya Muslims, uh, Hindus and Sikhs. The Pew, uh, the pre Pew research uh, puts Pakistan in the top handful of countries in the world for societal violence against religious minorities. So things are no better. So much of the violence, of course, is centred around Pakistan's blasphemy laws, which 
uh, criminalise anyone who insults Islam, including uh, by outraging religious feelings, section 295A, defiling the Quran, 295B, and defiling the name of the Prophet Muhammad, 295C, which carries the death penalty or life imprisonment. The laws, of course, as we know, are open to misuse and vary and very often used as a weapon of revenge against both Muslims and non-Muslims in settling uh, personal uh, scores or to resolve property disputes or money disputes. These laws are wholly um, incompatible with the fundamental right to the freedom of religion or belief, and they must be reviewed urgently, moving towards, in the long term, their full repeal. Just uh, I've just been looking back uh, over the last few days at some of our press releases over the f past couple of months even. On the 2nd of December, we had the death of a Hindu export manager in, a factory in Punjab province who was killed by a mob after he was accused of desecrating posters bearing the name of the Prophet Muhammad. He was attacked by hundreds of men and young boys on, uh, on a road in Sialkot who tortured the man to death before proceeding to burn his body. On the 30th of January, um, a Christian priest was shot dead in Peshawar when the vehicle he was travelling in was attacked by unidentified assailants who opened fire from a motorcycle and another priest was injured during that attack. Just two instances very recently, but we could go on. These happen on a regular basis. And it's been over seven and a half years since the Pakistani Supreme Court issued a landmark judgment instructing the government to protect minorities. And yet attacks such as these, such as these are rarely met with sufficient action or even condemnation from senior figures in Pakistan, including the Prime Minister Imran Khan himself. So what must we do? We must hold the Pakistani government to account for its dismal record on human rights, both in foreign trade and uh, and aid contracts. We must uh, we must the police forces need fresh reforms and updated methods of training to ensure the efficient and effective control of mob violence. Judges and lawyers involved in deciding controversial cases uh, need greater protection and security uh, against the threat of militant groups. But if we want to see real and lasting change, I believe it has to start in the schools. And, uh, and I recognise that this is long term, uh, but, uh, but we need uh, to change the culture. We need to change uh, the views of young people as they grow up. Despite educational reforms by the government, as well as national and international investments in education, schools still follow a biased education system. The current curricula and official textbooks are insensitive to Pakistan's religious diversity and promote intolerance between majority and minority faiths. Books often contain factual and historical inaccuracies and omissions and exclude the contributions of religious minorities, uh, religious minority heroes, such as Cecil Chowdhury, group captain Cecil Chowdhury himself, who I understand has been removed from textbooks of heroes now. Some also include bias and derogatory language towards religious minorities. Religious minority students endure physical and psychological abuse from teachers and classmates, including beatings and bullying. I believe that's where we need to start with young people, with, uh, with getting them to understand that every human life is valuable. Shabazz was a dear friend, a courageous campaigner, a man of peace and justice, an outspoken uh, critic of violence and of the unjust blasphemy laws. Let his death uh, not have been in vain. It's not just his memory which must live on, but his work and his voice. We owe it to him to carry on the struggle for true freedom of religion or belief in Pakistan, which of course will also bring peace and stability to that country. As, as a Briton, I must quote Winston Churchill, who once said, uh, quite simply, we must never, never, never give in. And as Christians, we must never give up hope. Thank you.
Thank you very much, uh, Mervyn. Um, before we move on, I must apologize. Um, there is a, a fifth very distinguished uh, speaker who um, uh, somehow I uh, failed to introduce earlier, um, but we're very pleased to be joined by Peter Bhatti, uh, uh, of course, one of Shabazz's brothers and founder and chairman of the International Christian Voice, uh, joining us from Canada. Peter, welcome. Um, I, I won't come to you immediately, but I just wanted to welcome you. I thought I would uh, come now to Tahira Abdullah um, uh, to give your brief comments. <clears throat> Welcome. Um, I will say good evening because it's 10 o'clock at night here, but good morning, good afternoon uh, to all the various uh, people in the time, different time zones. Um, I live and work in Pakistan. And so I am extremely honored and privileged and proud to count Clement Shehbaz Bhatti as not just a fellow activist, a fellow campaigner, a fellow traveler along this difficult road, but most of all, as a personal friend. I was present in his mother's house the day we got the sad news 11 years ago today. And I feel honored again and privileged that he invited me as one of three Pakistani Muslims to be present at his interfaith, inter, uh, interchurch dialogue that he held in Islamabad just a short while before he was so brutally and barbarically assassinated in 2011. This was an all day consultation with, with clergy persons, church persons, um, Pakistani Christians, and those belonging to other religions, non-Muslim religions. And it was meant to put forward a set of demands to the government of Pakistan, including uh, a review of the blasphemy law. And when he asked us to sign uh, with a little bit of, of hesitation and sadness, I will say, very few of us came forward to sign. And Michelle Chaudhry will remember that day, will remember that occasion. She was present and very, very active there. So I am privileged to not just uh, be present at this, at this commemoration and this observance, but also the celebration of the life of Clement Shehbaz Bhatti, because there is so much we have to be thankful for and to remember him for all his accomplishments. They've been enumerated in the tributes. I will not waste my precious few minutes. All I will say is that what Mr. Thomas was talking about just, just before I came on, uh, came on right now, is something that some of us have been working on. So I would like to show you, this is turning turning into a show and tell. This um, has been done by the National Commission for Justice and Peace in Pakistan. And Cecil Shane Chaudhry Jr. Was, was very much part of this organization. Um, this is something that I have done, textbooks of hate or peace. It is a research-based uh, publication about, oh, oops, my, my te technological skills are lacking. Um, uh, it, this talks about curricula and textbooks in the uh, province of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. And this is proof of what Mr. Thomas was just talking about just, just now. Um, about blasphemy laws, a lot of people have talked about the blasphemy laws. I refer you to an article in uh, the Newsline, November 2014, which was, which I wrote just after the lynching of the Christian couple uh, Shama and Shahzad Masi in a court Radha Kishan in the province of Punjab in November of 2014, and in this have given a set of demands and a set of set of. Um, uh, very strong recommendations. If political governments are too weak and lack the courage and bravery of Shabazz Bhatti 
to look, to, to revisit, to reopen, to review, revise or appeal or amend or, or, or totally repeal the blasphemy laws, then it is time that we look at ourselves and wonder whether we are a progressive, enlightened, moderate state amongst the committee of nations, the members of the United Nations, or have we turned into a narrow, theocratic, bigoted, fanatic, extremist state along the lines of the kingdom of Saudi Arabia or Iran or Israel or any of the theocratic states around the world which cannot be proud of their track record of human rights, rights of religious minorities, rights of women, rights of ethnic and sectarian minorities, even those belonging to the majority religion in Pakistan. For example, the blasphemy law is not just being used against non-Muslim minorities of Pakistan, but also against the majority religion and against sectarian minorities such as Shias and Ahmadis and, and, and all the rest. We have not yet talked about vigilante mobs who are left free to run amok and kill. For example, there was a Sri Lankan uh, businessman, uh, Priyanta Komara, who was, who was brutally murdered on false allegations of blasphemy just a few months ago. So there's a lot that needs to be done. And we miss Shehbaz Bhatti's bravery and courage and um, unflinching commitment to his, the causes dear to his heart. And I miss my, my fellow activist and my comrade. But don't worry, don't, don't, uh, don't mourn for us, Shehbaz. You are in a better place. We will not uh, wallow in, in, in self-pity or, or regret. We will renew our vows and our pledges to you, my friend Shehbaz, that we will continue your mission. Your blood shall not be shed in vain. I promise you that. I take my oath on it, my friend. Rest in peace, Clement Shabazz Bhatti. And I endorse the calls for him to be declared a martyr and on the first road towards sainthood. Thank you for having me here. Thank you so much, uh, Tahira Abdullah, for those very powerful and uh, moving words. And uh, I think we... We all identify with uh, your your message there. Let me turn now, if I may, to Jan Fiegel uh, to give us uh, his brief reflections, um, particularly from uh, your experience as the European Union's uh, special envoy uh, until uh, until a couple of years ago. Jan, welcome. Thank you, thank you, Ben. I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you well. Fine, fine, fantastic. Greetings from Central Europe, from Slovakia, Bratislava. I also uh, want to express gratitude to CSW and uh, and the partners in uh, getting this uh, memorial together. I feel like part of it, uh, last year we had a very intense and interesting meeting, and there are fruits of this, uh, on this uh, effort. Uh, so uh, I want to uh, say what is, I think, a principle that uh, the future is born through sacrifice. If we don't have sense for sacrifice, uh, then it's difficult to speak about future. And uh, and I am not uh, calling for for uh, uh, kind of in vain uh, 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 whatever types of sacrifice, but when it comes. It is important that it, it's not lost. And I think that the message and the legacy of Shabazz Bhatti is living. On one side, we see that uh, white strips or strip on Pakistani flag is uh, with bloody stains. White strip represents uh, minorities. Uh, on the other, uh, we see a lot of movement when we listen to colleagues, uh, what's going on and how strong is their effort to change legislation, to change atmosphere in this important country? There is a vision of Muhammad Ali Jinnah, his founding father, on Pakistan as a democratic country for all. And then uh, from General Ziaul Haq, 
who declared uh, Pakistan as Islamic State with a lot of uh, subsequent religious violence and persecution. I think that government of Imran Khan has very clear homeworks to fulfill what is in the title or in the name of the winning party. It's called the Movement for Justice. And justice is really crucial because peace is fruit of justice. Uh, one, one remark on the situation here in Central Europe, in the neighborhood we have war in Ukraine. But recall, in recent, please, in, in recent years, uh, in Russia we have seen growing religious persecution or for violation, as we used to say, freedom of, re of religion or belief violation. It was signal for more unhumanity. And we can see it in other parts of the world, like Afghanistan, uh, Pakistan, uh, Myanmar, or India, North Korea, China. Uh, so something should be done, and we should be aware of this. And uh, uh, what is the positive side of evolution since 2011? I think it's uh, very visible and, and now growing uh, global international religious freedom movement. Uh, with strands of, of government elections, parliamentarians, and civil society plus religious uh, faith-based organizations. And that's, that's crucially important because uh, religious freedom matters. It's the central principle for, for human rights protection. And, and it means for justice for all, human dignity for all. I wanted to mention that there is, for example, since two years, in spite of COVID crisis, uh, International Religious Freedom and Belief Alliance with 35 countries. Uh, and, and we speak together and we, we communicate uh, externally on different issues, like now on Ahmadis in Pakistan. And um, I think that that's also legacy of Shabazz Bati and, and Salman Tasir and many others. Uh, from Pakistan. I also want to pay tribute to International Christian Voice in, in Canada. We will listen to Peter because they accept and help uh, to many persecuted uh, individuals or families. I want to also stress how important for the European Union is to use instruments uh, which are at, at hand, like GSP, uh, which means General uh, System of Preferences in relation to Pakistan, which gets billions of, of uh, trade uh, uh, incentives, billions of euros or dollars, and it should be used for due implementation of all important international conventions, altogether 27. When I was there repeatedly, uh, we, we have seen how this makes difference, how this is influential, especially then on the case of uh, Asia Bibi, whom I cordially send my, my uh, regards. So uh, we shouldn't be pessimist, uh, and I conclude here, but rather uh, determined uh, for uh, solidarity, for very creative and, and, and uh, constructive communication and cooperation, uh, hard working, team working and networking uh, in the spirit of Shabazz Bati and other martyrs uh, of Pakistan. Thank you all. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Jan, uh, for those words and for uh, your own uh, many years of uh, deep commitment and leadership uh, on this issue. Um, let's go now to Knox Thames, and then I will ask Peter Batty to, to give us, I think appropriately, the, the final word. Um, but Knox, uh, you knew Shabazz well. You've been at the heart of this struggle for religious freedom around the world for many years. Um, over to you. Well, thank you. And I want to thank CSW for hosting this uh, on behalf of the Institute of Global Engagement. We appreciate the partnership with CSW and again, working with International Christian Voice to remember Shabazz's life and legacy. You know, people have already talked about the, the founding of Pakistan. It's, it's raising Detra to, to create a safe haven for, for religious minorities on the subcontinent. Originally Muslims coming out of uh, Hindu majority, colonial India. And so uh, Muhammad Ali Jinnah expressed these sentiments in his uh, statements at the founding conventions. Uh, the white bar and the Pakistani flag represents non-Muslim minorities. But this DNA 
that is so aligned with what Shabazz is about and what, what all of us support, I think is changing. It's um, changing in dangerous ways. So now we see a, a shrinking environment for freedom of thought, freedom of conscience, freedom of belief. Um, we've seen laws like the blasphemy law, the anti amati laws, weaponized to target uh, minorities, to send them to jail, to, to see their lives destroyed but also to victimize members of the majority community. I mean, there are more Muslims in jail for the so-called crime of blasphemy than others. Um, and that's a problem. That means every Pakistani is vulnerable to these pernicious laws and policies. But Shabazz, I think I want to trans transition away from looking back on his life to looking forward to how we uh, carry forward his vision. I mean, the, the, the title of this event is they can silence the man, but not his vision. How is that vision not going to be silenced? Well, it's going to be up to us. It's going to be up to you and me and our friends in Pakistan and our friends who support Pakistani human rights advocates like uh, Tamina and Michelle and others. How do we carry his vision forward? I mean, Pac uh, Shabazz represented the best of Pakistan, the best of this founding credo. He represented, I think, the best of uh, his Christian faith, demonstrating a willingness to sacrifice for the other both for his own fellow Christians, but people who believed and thought differently than himself. Um, I think so we need to we need to mirror his persistence, his bravery, his savviness and his faithfulness. You know, he was, uh, as we all know, he would, especially for those of us who lived in North America and Europe, he would call it all hours of the night. The man never seemed to sleep, constantly working to try to find ways to move his country forward. Uh, to find avenues to encourage the government to do better, if not uh, cajole or force. Uh, so now we need to think about, well, how do we carry this vision forward? What do we do practically? Well, I think it's first for those advocates who are in Pakistan. How do we outside in North America and Europe support them? How do we get them the resources they need, the political support they need, um, the uh, emotional encouragement they need so they can continue on? It's dangerous business to be a human rights advocate in Pakistan. Uh, so we need to be doing what we can to support their work. They're on the front lines of this fight. Uh, how do we protect the next Shabazz Bhatti from uh, facing this, a similar fate? And then those of us who live in the United States, in Europe, in Canada, we have resources and political influence that we need to bring to bear to ensure Pakistan lives up to its founding credo. This isn't about exporting our way of life into Pakistan. It's about looking to Pakistan's founding, uh, uh, challenging the current government and future governments to live up to that. We've, uh, Jan mentioned GSP Plus as a tool that the European Union has to encourage needed reforms in the United States. Pakistan has been designated as a country of particular concern for severe violations of religious freedom. Right now, there's a waiver on any action. Should that be reconsidered and communicated to Islamabad as a way to encourage them to make changes? This is in Pakistan's interest, and it's in on our interests because a Pakistan that respects diversity of thought and belief, a Pakistan where people of all faiths and none can live, uh, live out their lives without fear of harm or violence, that's a Pakistan that's going to be peaceful, prosperous, one that can uh, ensure the best future for its children. Um, Unfortunately, the trend lines are going the opposite direction, that we see a Pakistan that is at war with itself, where this violent extremist narrative is taking root uh, and all Pakistanis are suffering. And then that virus of violence spreads to other regions and then threatens um, countries outside of South Asia. So this is uh, a fight that's not just about Pakistan. It's about really how do we ensure a future free from persecution and violence? So I think this is where we need to remember Shabazz. Uh, it was, I was looking out the window today, remembering it was a very similar day in Washington, D.C. 11 years ago when I got the news of his murder. It was a beautiful day. It's sunny, it's crisp and clear. Um, and so instead of remembering what we lost, we should remember what he showed us how to do and recommit ourselves to do everything we can to press for uh, a better day in Pakistan uh, now and, and in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Knox. Uh, absolutely right. And le let me just make two um, brief observations before I then invite Peter to share his remarks. Um, Knox, I notice if I'm correct, uh, well, certainly I can see very clearly uh, the words act justly, love mercy and walk humbly um, 
on your wall. And that, of course, I think sums up Shabazz's credo and should be uh, the credo for all of us. But I also think um, that I've spotted a photograph of Shabazz. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I've got good good eyesight. <laughs> and uh, what I wanted to say was that um, I'm currently in a hotel room in Washington, D.C., but if I was in my own home in London, uh, my backdrop would be a bit more interesting than the one you see behind me. And my backdrop would include both the photograph of Shabazz, uh, which is on the bookcase behind where I usually sit when I do webinars, um, and also um, the words that I think match uh, at Justly Love, Mercy and Walk Humbly, which are some words from um, actually a South Korean uh, institution that says simply, why not change the world? And I think that also is uh, the question that um, brings us together in honor of Shabazz today. But um, last, but by absolutely no means least, it is a privilege to have Peter Butty uh, with us. And I would like to invite Peter to share his brief reflections and uh, give us some uh, final words to uh, motivate us before we conclude. Peter Butty, you're very welcome and over to you. Thank you, Roger. Thank you, all of you. Those are joining us today to remember the honor the sacrifice of Martyr Shabazz Bhatti, who knew fully well to the consequences of his human rights struggle and that it could cost him his life. But he marched on and he did pay with his blood 11 years ago on this day, March 2nd. His voice may have been silent, but his vision and mission were not. We are his voice and we will continue to speak for the victims of religious intolerance. There are daily horrific acts of violence against religious minorities of all faiths around the world, particularly concerned with the underreported persecution of religious minorities by state-sponsored religious laws that completely subjugate the people of their daily lives and are left at the mercy of the majority faith. As sadly, it is in the case of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, misquarantined as a civilized society. Today, I am hoping as we remember and honor Martyr Shabazz Bharti, we will raise our combined voice to highlight his mission for religious freedom and propose specific steps for Pakistan and other intolerant country to act immediately or else face condemnation of all justice and free societies. For government of Pakistan, few fundamental and critical immediate steps are proposed. Immediate steps to stop open and settle denomination of minority religious faith in school curriculums. Curriculum must be include and highlight the positive role of religious minorities in struggle, progress and prosperity of the country. Strict, sincere, and enforceable laws needed to be stopped, abduction, fake marriages, fear of incarceration of under Christian and Hindu girls were forced conversions. Blasphemy laws to be revised by the parliament to stop mob violence, false educations, intimidation of judiciary, and suppressions of minority faith in daily lives. Political leadership of the state should stand up against manipulation of the facts under the cover of Pakistan religious law. Using the excuse of, excuse of Pakistan was created religious grounds States remain reluctant to tackle the core issue of discrimination 
and denomination of minority faith on religious basis. It always view each violent incident as a law and order issue and move on till the next violent. While the daily life of religious minority continues to suffer under social economic deprivation, physical segregation, and the constant fear of violence. My hope today, while we have jointly raised this matter as one with the government of Pakistan and with international corridors for power to ask Pakistan to act and act with sincere intentions, not mere lip service. service. At the end, on behalf of International Christian Voice, I would like to convey our sincere thank to Christian Solidarity Worldwide, UK, and Institute of Global Engagement, US, Cecil and Irish Choudhury Foundation Pakistan for their collaboration and hosting this event with International Christian Voice to commemorate the 11th anniversary of Martyr Shabazz Bhatti. Thank you so much and God bless you all. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Peter. Um, unfortunately, as is often the case with uh, these kind of events, time is against us. We had hoped we'd have perhaps more opportunity for discussion, but let me just make some very brief concluding remarks to try and weave together some of the threads that have come out uh, from this panel discussion and the whole event. It has been, I think, for me, and I'm sure for all of us, uh, both a deeply inspiring, a very emotional, uh, but also a, a very encouraging uh, event, even as we mourn uh, the loss of our friend and, and brother 11 years ago, um, I think we can all take strength and inspiration. Uh, and the one thing I'm certain of uh, that Shabazz would not want us to do is, is, to, is to be uh, uh, wallowing in, uh, in, in sadness. He would want us to do what we have been doing in this event, which is to learn from his example uh, and to continue uh, the struggle for which he gave his life. And I think we can all uh, renew and redouble our commitment uh, to, to do just that. One thing that's come through in a number of ways uh, from things that Knox has said and others, um, uh, Jan in particular, uh, and from Cardinal Bowe's message earlier, is that the example of Shabazz Bhatti uh, is by no means confined to the struggle in Pakistan. Uh, of course, uh, there is a specific focus on Pakistan, and rightly so, a specific focus on the blasphemy laws and uh, other uh, aspects of persecution in Pakistan. But the messages of Shabazz's life um, inspire and motivate me in the range of advocacy that I do across different countries, and I'm sure that's true uh, of many of us. Uh, I'm tomorrow, for example, or rather on Friday, testifying at a, an inquiry on, on North Korea. Um, I'm having meetings about uh, increasing repression in Hong Kong and China uh, and Myanmar. And in all of those meetings, uh, I draw inspiration from the message uh, of Shabazz Bhatti. So his message and his legacy is, is truly worldwide. Um, what can we uh, do? Well, in CSW, we have a motto that uh, uh, Mervyn uh, knows extremely well, and I'm sure will correct me if I in any way get it wrong, but I don't think I will. Um, pray, protest, provide, and proclaim. We should continue to pray <laughs> uh, for those who are persecuted around the world, people of all faiths and none, not only Christians. And that's the other message from Shabazz's uh, life, is that we stand for freedom of religion or belief for everyone, everywhere, all the time. So pray, uh, protest uh, for those under persecution, provide in different ways that uh, uh, you can, and tell others. Tell others about the life of Shabazz Bhatti, uh, his example, and the, the ongoing struggle uh, to which we're all committed. And I think I'd just say two final things. Um, I know that uh, later this year, in, in the summer, the United Kingdom uh, is hosting the next 
ministerial on international freedom of religion or belief. Um, uh, it's taken place uh, several times in Washington, D.C., where, where Knox and I uh, currently are, um, but I'm looking forward to uh, it taking place in, in London. And I hope uh, all of those who've participated in this event and those who are viewing it will find a way to, to engage um, with that. And the final thing I think I would say, just to uh, bring this all together, it is, as I said at the beginning, today, of course, is Ash Wednesday, where we begin the season of Lent, uh, the uh, re remembering uh, uh, the suffering of our Lord, the passion of, of Christ, uh, but always remembering also that as we move through the Lord's journey uh, of suffering, um, Easter and resurrection comes at the end of this season. And I think Shabazz would want us to retain that hope that uh, uh, people around the world, people in Pakistan uh, and many other parts are going through immense suffering. And those of us who try to speak for them and stand in solidarity with them, uh, try to, in a very small way, suffer alongside them or hold their suffering in our hearts. Uh, but we can do that uh, with the knowledge that um, uh, resurrection will come. And we pray for uh, the resurrection of uh, freedom, of religious freedom, uh, of uh, equal rights, uh, of peace and justice in Pakistan and around the world. So with that, I want to thank uh, our uh, distinguished panel. I want to thank everybody who's participated uh, all the tributes and statements earlier on. Um, I'd like to thank my colleagues in CSW and in the other hosting organizations for all the, the work that's gone on behind the scenes to uh, prepare for this. Uh, and thank you to everyone who's been following this online. Please do share this uh, with others. Uh, please do look at the tributes on the events page. Um, I wish you a blessed uh, season of Lent as it begins now. And let's go out and... Uh, continue the fight for which Shabazz Bhatti gave his life. Um, thank you all very much, and God bless you all. Thank you, Ben, and also the same to you. Thank you. Yes, thanks, Ben.